Hi, I'm Pia Maria Thorén from Sweden, Gothenburg. I'm the founder of Agile People. And in this talk, I will elaborate around the new role for HR and managers in the future of work. So I'm going to kick off this presentation now that is called the future role for HR and managers, the Agile People Coach. I would like to start uh, to talk about what Henry Ford said um, about the way he viewed people. He said, thinking is the hardest work there is, which is probably the reason why so few engage in it. And it says something about how he view human beings, how he view people. A few people in the top create structures of micromanagement that flows top down. And um, he was not uh, really um, seeing people as equals. Uh, there were top management who were controlling the workers. They were deciding how work should be done. And at the production line, the workers were doing the physical work. This is a, a picture from a Ford factory from this time. And people were indeed part of a machinery here. Uh, scientific management, also called Taylorism, was a theory of management that analyzed workflows. And its main objective was to improve economic efficiency and especially labor productivity. It was one of the earliest attempts to apply science to the engineering of processes and to management. And Taylorism was highly effective for meeting challenges of this time, which was mainly about industrial manufacturing and logistics. So they built management systems of standardization to create efficiency at the production line, which is no longer the case today. Douglas MacGregor wrote a book in the end of the 1960s. Um, it was actually in the beginning of the 1960s when I think about it end of 1950s, the human side of enterprise, it's called. And in that book, he writes about theory X and theory Y. And that is about how the human mind works. Uh, if you believe in X, you may believe that people are lazy and unmotivated and don't want to take responsibility for themselves. But if you have you may view why you believe that people want to be the best they can be in this world and contribute to creating value for other groups of people. And they will also do so if they get the right conditions. Um, so this is important because how we view people affects how we structure our management processes. And then we, if we view people as lazy, we will also create structures for what we believe are lazy people and vice versa. If we believe that people are not lazy, that they are motivated, then we don't need that much policy and rule making. So um, this is a very important um, uh, thing that how do we view people, other people? Because we ourselves, we always view ourselves as white people. But it's the condition it's in the organizations that, that make us having the conditions that, uh, to be able to perform or not. Uh, I wrote this book in uh, 2017. And ever since I've been uh, talking about this approach to HR and management to apply the agile practices. And uh, I've been traveling the world with this book, um, my course, my Agile HR course and the Agile Leadership course. And I started to train other facilitators to give this course as well. Uh, the second book is called the Agile People Picture Book, which is a collection of very nice pictures that would visualize the message from the previous book. What should we do Instead, there are lots of problems with how HR and management work today. And we are not giving the right conditions for people to be able to perform and be happy, uh, which is why both roles really need to change drastically. We're going to look first at uh, HR. How does HR need to change 
in the new world of work. Well, first, the agile model of HR states that human resources job is not just to implement control standards and drive uh, execution, but rather to facilitate and improve organizational agility. And this changes HR's mission and focus. Driving agility means driving programs which create adaptability, innovation, collaboration, and speed. And this is a big difference from before. Actually, I believe that HR should lead the transformation because HR has been sitting in the back seat for too long now. It's time to step up and show what they can do for the organization. Because in the, our organizations, it's all about people and the system in which people live and work. And if we can give the right prerequisites to people, they will then take care of the rest. We don't need to do more things. We just need to learn how to stop hindering people from giving their best effort to the company by providing uh, the, the wrong structures. And HR has the power to decide on these structures that can support people to perform or make it more difficult to contribute in creative and innovative manners because HR control change, leadership, people development, talent acquisition, and they provide the structures for the organization based on how we need and have to work. So if HR keeps holding on to the old ways of doing things, we don't have the possibility to change in any part of the company. I usually say this, job descriptions are boxes for standing on, not living in. We shouldn't use them to close people in or to limit people. We need to release potential instead, and then we need to widen uh, job descriptions. Make them more flexible. T-shaped competence is important. This is about boundary spanning on an individual level, you could say. So we talk about T-shaped competence and you need to have both breadth and depth. And you can also call these people generalized specialists or specialized generalists. This creates flexibility. For the individual, it becomes possible to broaden or deepen the competence depending on the, what they are interested in. And for the team, it creates an increased flexibility when everyone can take on each other's tasks. So we have a number of principles for um, HR, how they are going to change. I usually talk about from to. So instead of developing these policies, rules and standards, the need to support flexibility, speed and collaboration. And instead of delivering programs and processes to customers, they need to involve customers in the delivery uh, taking them into the HR project and working together uh, to find out what are the needs of the organization, of people and of management, and how can I, as an HR professional, fulfill those needs. Uh, instead of talking about HR specialists or HR generalists or HR administrators, we need T-shaped HR people who can take on many different roles. And instead of individual work, we need to work cross-functionally, also inside the HR team. Instead of functional HR or specialist areas, we can work with value stream-based HR. And instead of jobs and positions, we play many different roles in the organization, depending on the need and the goals. Um, Instead of running HR projects, um, project teams, we can work with stable, high-performing teams. And instead of promotions and bonus programs, we can work with salary formulas and profit sharing, which also can be performance related. It's just about who do we use to judge performance. It's not anymore the manager in the future of work. It might be a collective task. Many people are involved around the evaluation of a specific individual. Instead of delivering programs and processes, we support the organization to perform. 
And instead of one size fits all, we understand that no size fits all. Instead of having the HR recipe, we work a lot more with experimentation and trial and error. And instead of human view X, we turn to human view Y. We believe in people. What about leadership then? What is agile leadership? Well, we're moving here from managing performance where we are telling people exactly what to do to enabling performance. So the CEO turns to become a chief enabling officer in this scenario. It's not difficult to lead when all the rules are predetermined and it's just about breaking down goals from top down. When there is a report, a system, a checklist, and the detailed process for everything you, you do, it's all about following instructions and follow up according to predetermined templates. That's not real leadership. Real leadership is about convincing and selling your idea to the team and become a real leader who can make people go in the direction that you want them to go because they want to go in that direction. So the leader becomes a gardener here. And I love that metaphor for leadership. The company is a garden and the overall purpose for a garden could be to be as beautiful as possible or to grow fruits or vegetables or something else. Regardless of the purpose, the garden needs to be taken care of to reach its purpose. So we need to take care of the plants and some like to grow in the shadow and some need more sunshine. And we need to remove the weeds around the little plant that comes up. Some like to grow with other plants of diverse kinds to develop faster and become beautiful together. And some need a lot of space around them and some needs lots of water and some grow slower and some go, grow quicker. The, my point here is that the leader, the agile leader, is the gardener who takes care of the plants, trying to fulfill the purpose of the garden. And the gardener can create prerequisites for the plants to grow by giving the right conditions for every plant without forgetting about the whole garden. We cannot force the little seed to grow. We cannot command and control the seed. We can only uh, create the right conditions, the soil, the water, uh, all the things around the plant. So there is no way to force it. Behavior is a function of personality and environment. And this is important to remember. It's not about really the people, it's about the system. We cannot change people. We cannot change personality. Personality change is extremely rare. So what we can do is to change the environment, the soil, uh, the conditions in which people grow and develop. So agile leadership principles then, how do they look? We move from building on control and command to building on motivation instead. We move from communicating via formal managers to communication that flow freely between people from formal leadership to informal leadership, from micromanaging to explaining why and leave the how to the people, from secret information to transparent information, from managers deciding performance of employees to employees deciding performance for themselves. They can do that, for example, with objectives and key results. Uh, we move from decision making by management to everybody being involved in decision making. And we move from goal setting by managers to goals set by individuals and teams. We move from smart goals to OKRs, from formal managers to self-leadership, and from human view X to human view Y. So now we are moving into this role that I see that HR and managers need to take, the role of the agile people coach. So what's different here from uh, an agile coach? Well, an agile people coach needs to have a lot deeper skills about people. Maybe not that much process skills and maybe not that much tech skills as an agile coach, but definitely 
very deep people skills. So an agile people coach probably comes from many years of leadership or working in an HR department. Um, an agile people coach can work on all three levels uh, of coaching. They can work on the individual level, the personal level. First, it's about building yourself, self-leadership, and working together with others and help others uh, perform and coaching other people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And then it's about team uh, coaching. It's about helping the team to become high performing. And then it's about all of us, the whole organization. Uh, then you become an enterprise agile people coach, creating the structures or rather removing the limiting structures and adding the right structures. Uh, then the right culture will start growing in your organization. And here are all the different roles that we see an agile people coach needs to take. Except for Lisa Adkins, four agile coach roles, trainer, mentor, coach, and facilitator. You also need to understand the organization as a system, and that would be in the navigator role. You also need to have local expertise and full understanding of the business value chain. And then you will move into the guide role. And then we have a role that you take when you don't take any of the other roles, and that would be the reflective observer. You stand outside the system and you look at the system and you think, okay, when I step into the system again, which role should I take to make most use of myself? This is what we call the Agile People Coach. And we created this new role because we believe it will be crucial for HR and leaders to change uh, their role fundamentally in the future of work. And we can only change organization by limiting um, and removing the structures together. We don't have any recipes for this. When we work uh, with Agile, we don't follow any recipes. There are no recipes or best solutions that always work. We don't know, however, that when we stick to certain principles, it tends to work well. So that's why we work with the Agile people principles. Best practice is always past practice and only the mediocre companies follow them because you will never be better than competitors if you follow best practice. Um, so having said that, I'm actually going to give you a very simple recipe for changing the system and how to grow culture. We start by removing limiting structures and they mainly come from finance and HR. Here we talk about budgets, performance processes and uh, compensations like bonuses. Then we increase supporting structures to make it easy to behave according to the agile mindset. And then we start to show those new behaviors that come from learning new ways of acting and working. And then we repeat from one again, because these structures have a tendency to creep back on us. To get a bit of inspiration, you can go to agilepeoplemanifesto.org. And last but not least, we invite you to join the Agile People community. Participate in an Agile People training online or Visit Agile People for more information, agilepeople.com. Thank you so very much for listening to me, and I hope you have a really nice conference for the rest of the time.